Good. All right. Excited to uh, be back at home this weekend. Uh, matchup against Charlotte. Uh, Two o'clock kickoff. Uh, should be great weather for uh, for the game, which is good. You know, we've had a couple of rain games here at home uh, so far this year, so it should be uh, should be great weather for uh, what will be a great matchup. And so, uh, kids are. Uh, you know, they're preparing right now and uh, should have a great practice this afternoon uh, and looking forward to a great week. Questions? Raise your hand if you have questions. Coach, we saw Mason Garcia, you know, seemingly make some improvements last game. So what do you think of his performance and, you know, things to build off of there? Well, I thought uh, Mason certainly did some positive things both in the run game and the passing game. Uh, against SMU uh, a week and a half ago. And, uh, you know, just like I've said, uh, you know, virtually every week, you know, he continues to improve. And so excited about that. And, uh, you know, he's, he's highly motivated to build off that performance and, uh, and be ready to go this Saturday. Do you think it's helped Mason to just maybe take a step back a little bit and um, just, just be in that different role? You know, maybe it has, and uh, and and Coach Kirkpatrick and I have talked about that, and um, you know, because I think when when Mason is relaxed and, uh, and 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 composed, he's done some really really good things. I think he gets really excited. Uh, he's very motivated to uh, you know to to be great and to help our team. Uh, and uh, you know, certainly the other night, uh, coming off the bench, uh, you know, he was he was very effective. Coach, one of those weekends where the pageantry of college football can kind of get in the way of the victory. How are you keeping the guys focused this week with homecoming and all the other stuff outside of football? Well, you know, this one's maybe a, a, a touch easier, in my opinion, uh, than some of them are. Um, you know, homecoming uh, really is, is for the fans, for the alumni, uh, for everybody in the area. Um, it's, you know, a lot of people back on campus. Uh, you know, for us, our job is to try to go out and win the football game. And, and so really, uh, the game to us is no different than any other weekend. Now, we can certainly uh, make it a, a, a great weekend for our alumni by, by getting a victory on the field. Uh, but really, we don't need to be caught up in any of the, any of the stuff going on uh, around uh, anything with the game other than just what happens on the field. I know you are moved on to Charlotte. But I just want to ask about the last game. You've been aggressive going for it, fourth down at times here. You went from fourth down on the Mason right. play. Just, you know, fourth quarter, you explained your thought process upon uh, fourth and two, I think six, seven minutes ago in that situation. So, um, you know, I think there is a, a line between being aggressive and, and doing what you think is best to help you win. And I think that every situation is different. And that's, uh, you know, that's, we spend a lot of time preparing for those situations. And, you know, you take a lot of factors into play. And so, uh, you know, the one you're referencing is seven minutes to go, uh, fourth and two from the minus 33. So we're fairly deep in our own territory. Uh, we have all three timeouts. And so, you know, the, the question there is, if you go for it and get it, great. You extend the drive that you're, you're in right now. Um, if you go for it and don't get it, uh, you're putting yourself behind the eight ball pretty, pretty firmly. Uh, that deep in, in territory, um, you know, you're, you're hoping to limit them to a field goal at that point. So it's a two possession game right now. Another score takes it to be a three possession game. Uh, so uh, with the way we had played defensively uh, for the last several quarters, especially in the second half, um, you know, really they hadn't moved the ball at all in the second half. Uh, and, you know, the last two plays, we hadn't gained a yard. So uh, felt like right there with all three timeouts, you know, our best course of victory of, of, of winning the ball game was to punt it away, use our timeouts, and try to get the ball back with, you know, five-plus minutes to play in better uh, field position uh, with a fresh set of downs. Now, it didn't work out for us. Uh, you know, if we're sitting here having the same discussion and it did work out for us, then, you know, it'd be a great call. So, but that's the thing you deal with every time. I mean, uh, no different than going for it fourth and one, uh, you know, down in the red zone instead of taking the field goal. Uh, certainly you converted that one and a uh, hey, great decision. Uh, now, if you don't, then, you know, not such a great decision. So 
it's what we deal with. Uh, I mean, we've looked at our stats. You know, we're converting about 44% uh, on the year uh, on fourth down. Uh, we look at the analytics every week. So uh, I know that uh, it's easy for someone to sit here after the game and evaluate the decision and be very critical of it. But uh, we spend a lot of time each week preparing for those situations, uh, both analytically uh, and in practice. So uh, there's a lot that goes into that decision. On the uh, Flynn fumble, it looked like uh, he, he was down, uh, but replay showed he was not clearly not. Right. Do you have something incorporated there where if it's a, a tricky call like that, go ahead and get to the line, try to run a play before they can review it? Yeah, they're not going to let us. They will not let you snap that ball. We were trying to get up there pretty quick. Uh, we've been huddling the whole night, so the guys, of course, went to the huddle as they always had done during that night, and that was part of our game plan. So, uh, you know, everybody on the headset had urgency. Uh, the kids got up there pretty quick, uh, but they're not going to let you snap that ball. And if you watch college football uh, across the country, and you've seen it several times with our games, they're going to wait until you get right up there, and you get ready to snap it, and they'll probably even let the ball get snapped, but they're going to buzz it. And, uh, and that's what, you know, when I'm talking to the officials on the sideline a lot of times when it's a questionable call like that, uh, and, you know, what I'm asking the officials, are they looking at it? Are they looking at it? They need to look at it. And what he'll do is, yeah, if, yeah, they're looking at it. If he says that, they're getting ready to buzz it. They won't let you snap the ball. If he says, yeah, it's already been cleared and confirmed, then they'll let it go ahead and snap. So. Coach, Navy's defense obviously had a lot of success against Charlotte's offense on right. Saturday. How much do you put <clears throat> stock into what another team did successfully against your future opponent? Well, a lot. And, uh, you know, put stock into who's, who's on the field, too. You know, uh, that game was 0-0 for much of the game. Um, now, you know, Charlotte did miss a lot of wide open receivers down the field where, you know, if they connect those, it's a different ball game. Um, you know, they went with a different quarterback Saturday, too. And uh, so, you know, there's lots of things you're evaluating uh, because their offense does change depending on which quarterback is in there. But uh, certainly we've looked at that film a good bit. We've looked at the SMU film. We've looked at the Florida film, the Maryland film, the Georgia State film, uh, the South Carolina State film. So we looked at all those and, and really evaluated kind of who they are uh, based on their personnel and their execution. But uh, certainly it was a great win uh, by Navy. Uh, and could have easily been a great win for Charlotte Saturday, uh, with Navy really only having you know the two big plays. Sorry to go back to that Flynn play, but only, yeah. it's hard to tell a guy to stop trying and stop running. So yeah. how do you balance? You know, go down or or keep going, and protect the ball. Well, you know, we spend a good part of practice each week with ball security and traffic. I mean, we have a a drill that we're going to do offense versus defense, which is, um, I mean, a they really, I mean, this is not a, you know, live, you know, team setting deal. This is in addition to that, um, you know, they're trying to punch at, I mean, it's repeatedly and it's very, very aggressive. And so there are mechanics that we teach and that we drill, uh, you know, each week in that setting and then reteach in the good on good setting, the, the team versus scouts setting of how we want the ball secured in that exact situation. And so, uh, you know, when, uh, and when we don't do a great job with those mechanics, then that results in a turnover. And so I think it's a, uh, a teachable moment for, hey, that we're not applying the proper fundamentals that we teach in practice. This is why it's important, and this is what happens when, you know, we don't use those proper fundamentals. And, you know, obviously we've got to do a better job of coaching it to ensure that they're always used in that situation. Coach, overall, Thursday night, how would you evaluate the offense's performance coming out of the bye? Well, you know, we're spending a lot of time on a game a week and a half ago. Um, obviously, it was not good enough. Uh, now, we were facing, you know, the best defense we've seen since Michigan. And so uh, we did a lot of uh, positive things uh, offensively. And, you know, at the end of the day, the game was 14-10 uh, in the fourth quarter. We're driving. I think when that uh, turnover occurred, we were on the, about the minus 43-yard line. We'd already gained the first down. Uh, so you're sitting there where, you know, you may be getting ready to go drive down and, and go take lead in the fourth quarter against one of the best teams in our, in our conference. So uh, you can't just sit here and say that we did not do a lot of positive things offensively. But obviously we have to improve on that performance. 
Uh, we have to eliminate the turnovers uh, in those critical situations, uh, and we've got to do a better job of getting points on the board. You know, after getting a excuse me, after getting a chance to watch the film, you know, how maybe how excited are you about some of the young cornerbacks you guys have, just the way they you know responded after being tested like that? I'm excited about a lot of the young players we have. You know, we, we continue to, to have some guys go out there and get some valuable experience in their first year as Pirates. And, uh, you know, so a Antoine Jackson, yeah, he gave up the double move early in the ball game, uh, which, you know, we spent the whole bye week, you know, talking to him about, you know, having disciplined eyes because the number one thing for a secondary player uh, that you, they've got to learn is they can't have dirty eyes. You know, they've got to have great eyes in the secondary. And, uh, you know, he let his laps right there. It cost us a touchdown, but I think it's a valuable lesson for him. And it's painful. It's painful for him to learn. It's painful for us to experience. But those are the ones you learn the best from. You know, it's you know, I can tell you stuff over and over and over again, but when you li you're living it, then that really reinforces it. And I thought he really responded positively to that early in the ball game and came back and played very, very well through the the balance of the game. Um, I thought Isaiah Brown Murray uh, had a very solid night, uh, and that's another young corner who uh, has, you know, has, has really rebounded from a, a little bit of a rocky start early in the year, uh, and he's going to be a very solid player for us. Um, you know, Siobhan's in his first year of, of starting, uh, and, you know, he did get some playing experience, you know, the second, pa second half of last year after he was healthy, uh, but, you know, he's another one, you know, gave up a a ball there early in the ball game on a phenomenal catch by the SMU receiver. Uh, and then after that, you know, really did a fantastic job through the balance of the game. Now, I would like to see him catch a couple of those that he made great plays on and, and convert those into turnovers for the Pirates. And obviously, that would be a big swing in the ball game. But I thought those guys competed very well. And it was obvious that uh, SMU uh, really wanted to attack them. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, our guys were ready for the, uh, you know, for the opportunity and responded in the way they did. been in games in the fourth quarter, you've been in one score games in the fourth quarter and we aren't able to get those points to win the game. So is it an experience thing? Is it an adjustments thing? Or is it a bit maybe not that simple? Well, I think that uh, there's a lot that goes into guys, you know, being, being comfortable performing at a high level in those pressure situations. And uh, the only way that they're going to get there is by being in those pressure situations. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, the more we're in those situations, the more comfortable some of our guys are going to get. Uh, you know, we've played six games now and been in those situations a lot. So, you know, hoping that starting with this weekend, we're going to play much better in those situations. Uh, but it is, it is a big combination of experience and, you know, a group gelling together and, uh, you know, just performing at a higher level. And, uh, you know, that's our goals for this week, and that's what we're, you know, working very hard towards. Coach, it seems like uh, Coach Pogge over at Charlotte, one of the more colorful characters, you could say, in college football. I'm just wondering if you've had any crossover with him or any history with him and his staff in the past. So we got, we got a chance, Coach and I got a chance this summer to spend some time together and, uh, at the conference meetings and, uh, you know, really enjoyed my interactions with him. Uh, obviously, he has been, you know, incredibly successful, uh, you know, over the span of his life and, you know, before football uh, in, in, the, in, in the business uh, uh, area and then just, you know, moving over in a kind of a second career, uh, you know, in high school and college football. And, um, you know, obviously you're not, you're not as successful as he has been unless you're a pretty sharp guy and, and really have a great understanding of how to, how to work with people and manage people. So um, I, I think he's done a great job putting that roster together. Obviously he, he overhauled the roster significantly. I mean, there's, I don't know, 50, 60 new, new guys on that roster, and, and they come from a lot of different places. Uh, you know, he brought a lot of his guys that had played for him at uh, St. Francis, uh, and, you know, he, he's put together a very talented group. And uh, I know that, uh, you know, they've been close uh, in a lot of games uh, with a very tough schedule. And so he's, uh, you know, he's working hard to get, uh, get things going there. But, uh, you know, I just... Uh, I, I think he's great for that program and that university, and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing him again this Saturday. Coach, we saw James go down on the kick. 
kick off, but you know, based on his status, and also you guys use prominent players, some home special teams, y'all highly value it. So, just kind of your philosophy there. Does anything like that change your philosophy, or, or you, you guys are going to stick to what you do? Well, I think uh, number one, Javius, uh, the injury was not significant. Um, he's day to day right now, so hoping to get him back pretty quick. Um, you know, if if uh, if I knew I was going to get in a car wreck when I pulled out tonight, you know, I'd maybe second guess getting in my car. You know, there was an accident right out there at the entrance uh, last evening when I was leaving. Somebody was pulling out and they got uh, T-boned. Um, so you know, hindsight always you know causes you. Well, gosh, we hadn't, hadn't done that. Um, but, you know, me, uh, Coach Saban, Coach Smart, uh, coaches all across the country, you know, they're going to, you're going to put your best players on the field in situations for them to be impactful. And uh, you see it all across college football and, and with us too, that we're going to play our best players that give us a chance to be impactful. Um, we do look at uh, snap counts a lot uh, with, you know, all of our guys and, and you know, who's getting snaps where. Um, obviously, Javius being a freshman, uh, his first snaps really uh, were coming on special teams, and he's been highly impactful all year on special teams. You know, he's been a significant guy on kickoff return with his abilities there, uh, and he's actually our leading tackler on our kickoff team. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've joked around, he would be a really good DB for us. He was a very good tackler in high school, very good DB in high school. So, you know, you hate to ever have a guy get dinged up uh, but that is part of our sport, and we always have to be prepared for it. Uh, but you're always going to do what is best uh, to give yourself a chance to be highly impactful. And I think he has been highly impactful, probably more so on special teams than he has been anywhere else, although he was starting to uh, show some things on offense, and we look forward to getting him back in both areas uh, here soon. Any other questions for Coach? There you go. All right, thanks a lot.